Welcome to Facebook Live. It's my privilege and honor to invite you for the welcome session, for the live session in the Facebook. My name is Kamrul Hassan. I'm the Managing Director of Sensei Wisdom Bangladesh. So I welcome you to the live session. Today, we have a special guest here with us, my business partner, the Chairman of Sensei Wisdom Bangladesh, Mr. Ranjan De Silva. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring our Chairman to in front all of you, Mr. Ranjan De Silva. Thank you, Kamrul, and um, welcome to the Sensei feed on Facebook Live. It's an honor and pleasure and privilege uh, to be with you and to take you through a little conversation uh, between Kamrul and me with regard to our organization and our intentions for the future. So, Kamrul, thank you for arranging this. Uh, could I know from you what, uh, what's behind your mind in terms of forming and joining Sensei and forming it in Bangladesh? Uh, that's basically a long history that, you know, during my work hour, work years, over the 15, 16 years that I have worked into, into different corporates, like with Ericsson, with HSBC, with Bragg Bank in the last league, I was thinking how I can create impact towards people's life. So that is only the way I thought in my mind, if I can do something to help people to realize the potential and to realize the dream, only that way probably I could live in people's mind, in meaning that I could create some legacy out of my life so that, you know, I would be remembered. So in that way, I was thinking to something. And on that note, I found Sense International that's doing fantastic job in the world, that they're helping organizations, they're, they're helping people to live, they're, they're helping people to bring their excellency, their potentials that we have. May I, may I ask you, Ranjan, Mr. Uh, Ranjan De Silva, and how did you start with Sense International and what really you are doing in this region and what is the purpose of the organization that you started? Yeah, uh, I, I think it's uh, important to go back a little bit about why I came into Sensei. It was back in the mid-90s when I uh, attended the Mastery of Self through Neuro Linguistic Programming uh, Play Shop under Omar Khan. I realized my real purpose in life, or at least I thought at that point that was my purpose in life, uh, was to really improve myself by helping others, organizations and people to be the best that they can be. And two years later, I decided to leave John Keels and after having been there for seven years as a director to form Sensei in Sri Lanka. And that very same year, a group from Rahim Afros visited us and um, talked about setting up a supermarket chain in Sri Lanka. Now, since I have set up Kiel Super in Sri Lanka, one of the first supermarket chains over there, I had the credentials to come and help out. So my first visit here was uh, back in uh, year 2000 when I mm. came in uh, to set up Rahima Fru's uh, Agora supermarket. But that project brought me here for three years, once a month, into this country, uh, which made me meet so many other organizations too. So since then, you keep on coming into Bangladesh, right? Yes, I've been almost uh, coming here once a month, um, and I think I have guided more than 50 organizations, okay. um, banks, telcos, multinational companies, uh, the list is quite long. But so, to name a few of them, it's like the Grameen Phones, Eastern Bank, the BRAC mm. NGO, the Unilevers, mm. BAT, um, many of them. And I do forgive for not mentioning all the names if you are watching. Uh, but I do thank all those organizations who trusted us to take mm. us through this process. So, Kamru, may I ask you a question, therefore? So, could you tell a little bit about why you, deci you decided to be uh, in this organization and join me in my dream? Uh, thank you so much, Ranjan. First of all, you know, just having faith on me and uh, ki the kind of legacy that you have created out of your 20 years of work with Sense International. So I have observed and I have noticed that the kind of impact that you have been created 
over the 20 years of work in people's life, in organizations that we have helped the way to bring the efficiency, to, you know, to bring the world-class organization, and ultimately driving the result and hitting the bottom line and creating the lasting impact in people's life. That really attracted me when I was looking forward, you know, what I can do, you know, in order to bring my experience and expertise into the industry that I can create and, and similar kind of impact. And then I found it's none other than better than Sense International and then in this region that you are coming into Bangladesh and already you have worked, as you said, 50 organizations that you have worked. So all this testimony really created impact on me as well and I thought yes that could be a better way to start my second innings of my career and then on that moment you know we came into discussion and then you accepted and both of us I think we have created this Sensei Wisdom Bangladesh Sensei Wisdom Holdings yeah. and that's how you know I thought could be best way to start the journey yeah fantastic yeah so uh, I, I think it's very important to note that you now decided that Bangladesh is an important uh, uh, global economic power <coughs> for Sensei International to decide to come and set up here, form a company, is because we respect and we trust uh, the, the potential here. And I personally have grown because of this country and the organizations um, into becoming a resource uh, which can add value. And I think in this uh, almost 20 year period, uh, I've been able to sort of understand the Bangladeshi psyche, the business mindset, the leadership after having worked with so many organizations and such brilliant leaders and that's what really makes you me energized about being here. So may I ask you, Kamrul, what do you think uh, the needs of the current uh, uh, Bangladesh corporate is? Well, uh, <clears throat> over the last one decade or more, what we observing into the corporate is the growth phenomena mm. that the country as a whole is presenting to us as the economy is rising, you know, the infrastructure is building, our IT infrastructure is, is creating overall, you know, our government also creating, uh, in, I mean, a friendly environment for, you know, business, for the infrastructure and the IT. And we also now connected with the global village, global economy. Right. And I see as we have tremendous population as well, and that is, that's the growth potential that we have all together. Yeah. The, all the ingredients are there. Yeah. And what the potential I feel is we are densely populated. We have a huge population and our economy is just started to grow. Mm -hmm. And the globally now the way we are connected today, probably in 100 years, we did not have th this connection ever. Yeah. So we can leverage the global connections into the economy and then we can transform, we can go to the next level and I believe that we are right now on the foundation level. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of, if I give an example, right, when, a, when, a, when an aircraft you know, takes on fly, it goes to the runway first, it, 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 it starts somewhere, you know, it stops and then it goes for fly off. Mm -hmm. And to me, we are in kind of situation, our overall economy is as we are just about to fly off and that's the potential that we have. And I believe that Sensei uh, bringing the 30 years or experience into this country, you know, can you tell us about what kind of you know, you know, work that can be done you know, to help our industry overall to flourish? Uh, that's very interesting that you say that, Kamrul, because as you say, in order to fly off, uh, you need to have energy. <coughs> so what I've seen in many organizations um, is that, and not only in Bangladesh, this is in the 20 odd countries that I've already worked in, that um, there's a lot of energy sapping which is going on, where, you know, on one hand, there is no clear direction. There's no mission, vision, what do you want to be in five years? And because there's no direction, there's a lot of confusion in the organization. When there's confusion, people, you know, go talk, you know, in little cliques and circles, and that saps the energy. Secondly, lots of organizations do not have a set of values um, that drives them. And, and having positive values create a positive culture. And I think uh, if you have positive values um, and a culture where people can thrive on, that will also help them to start growing to their fullest potential. Now, who ensures that the values are lived? It starts with the leadership. 
if leaders don't walk the talk, if leaders don't treat their people uh, as people, or if they more con consider them machines, then what happens is people are not motivated, they're not engaged. They might just do a nine to five job, but their mind is somewhere else because of the mobile devices. They are, you know, on Facebook or uh, they are connecting with someone else, but their heart and mind is not there. But if leadership, leadership can really show the real, you know, passion uh, and get people into passion areas. If I love, say, selling, put me into a selling job. If I love doing IT work, put me into an IT job. Put the right person in the right place so that they'll be self-motivated to do the work they're doing. Uh, and then you have the next issue where the teams, yeah, we've got now the mission, we've got a good culture and values to work on it, and we've got leaders being developed, which is some, other, is some of the work we do currently. And then you have teams who don't work with each other. Sometimes silos are formed, interdepartmental conflicts. How do you resolve them? How do you sort of get them to rise above their individual departmentalization into looking after the organization itself? And then we do some work helping people to become better teams. Now, companies are consistent of people. So the final layer is the individual. How do you create purposeful people who has the right values, the right intention, not only care for themselves, their families, their organization, their environment, so that at the end of the day, they are able to add value to the organization by adding positive energy. So I think the work we are doing is creating positive energy so that those cultures are nourished so that people can actually operate in that scenario. Fantastic. Um, to our viewers, I mean viewers, if you have any questions and comments, would you please, you know, you can, you can ask the questions and would be able to answer some of your queries. And also, may I, can you just give us some favor if you're, if you're listening, if you're watching us, can you give us some, you know, likes and, you know, some comments so that, you know, we understand that, that whatever you want to, you know, you know, hear from us, watch from us and want to get something from us. Uh, can we have some feedback as well so that we can we can understand that you are watching and then your expectation is something that you are looking forward well uh, on a separate note we are pretty young in Bangladesh so as you know that we are bring you are bringing tons of experience out of your life that you have worked in corporates in uh, you know, from your uh, early stage we have gone towards in the board level and then you retired uh, from the corporate life to you know the something passion yeah. now how do you you know help people to find the passion that is hidden towards us because what i see today in our country especially we have about you know 180 millions of population mm -hmm. i mean approximately and we have tremendous potentials in a country overall because of geography, because of the demography, and because of the overall aspect, yeah. how can we really help to find out the hidden potentials that we have? And then we can use the potentials to the growth of a country, to, the, to aim our life, to have our dream. So how, do, how can you really help us on that note, you know, bringing the sensei experience into the country? Yeah, I think uh, it's a very important question. I believe uh, every human being has unlimited potential in them. They are born with some talent, some gift, in order for them to be able to uh, do something for this world. So talking about pat pa passion and potential, I think it starts with helping people through a process to identify their real purpose. Why are they in this world? And I always have an interesting Maybe they are in the music industry or sports. So how do you help reflect internally and start figuring out what makes you feel alive? And secondly, the struggles that we are having and have had in the past might have an indication of what your real, potential, real purpose is in the organization and in this world. And thirdly, how can you serve? How can you do something to support the process of life? Because we have so many issues in this world on one hand, the environment, we are really ruining it. On the other hand, we have marginalizing, marginalized, victimized people. Sometimes parents not knowing how to parent their children put unnecessary pressure on them. 
which causes psychological trauma for a lifetime. We have issues like violence happening between divided groups. It could be within a family, within an organization. So can we help people to do something so that they, they are able to really be of service to this world? And of course, the third, fourth component is, can you make a living while serving? One of the famous quotations I have is, can we make our vacation our vocation? Okay. We are going to work. It's like going, going for a holiday. You enjoy doing it. And we do have a, a process called mastery of self using the um, technology of NLP or neuro-linguistic programming where people go through this process and really identify what their real purpose is, what their real power of mind is. But we hope and Kamruli are quite passionate about it. You know, uh, we know that this has to be uh, scaled out. We can't uh, do this just running small workshops. And this is where Kamrul brings a lot of his expertise and experience in. So can you share how do you think we could take this very important technology and the message and the mindset mm -hmm. to people you know, using technology and whatever you have in mind? That's really, really very valid and very important question. I'm really glad that you have asked me. And uh, that's the reason basically I came into you know, leaving my established career and you know, coming into this arena where I did not have walk into this path. So what my intention was and is, it is today that how we can create impact in people's life because today what we see here in this part of the world, we are going through a lot of difficulties, a lot of scarcities, our resources are limited, our education system you know, that we have, that, but the population we have but may not suffice the education that we give. Right. Today, what we, are, what we are getting prepared ourselves in, into the university that may not necessarily suffice to, in tomorrow, in 10 years from now. So if we see what is going to happen in the next 10 years, we really cannot predict because we cannot say that what Sophia you know, would, is going to do in, and uh, whether we're going to have Sophia in every one of our house or not and how they're going to work for us. So knowingly and uh, knowing this scenario, how we are preparing ourselves. On that point, if we can, you know, bring the real life education, you know, people, I mean, facing the future challenges that we have, if we can predict something and based on that, if we can prepare ourselves starting from the mindset and heart set that, yes, we, we, we have passion, definitely, and we have the, our abilities as well. And how can we find out our natural abilities, natural talent, and also can develop from there. Mm -hmm. So that's the real ground mm. and starting to work from the very preliminary stage you know where we can contribute significantly developing people's mindset yeah. you know is openness you know willing to accept the challenges and willing to you know have difficulties in our life and address that accordingly mm. so if we can you know bring that experience into the mass level creating into the platform where we can you know bring you know, life-based education, you know, and how they can, you know, not necessarily it's always the, you know, skill sets that we need into the corporate, but, you know, in order to be a proper human being and good human being, yeah. how do we face our challenges, you know, day to the life? As you said, you know, parenting is a challenge, definitely. Our kids' education is a challenge as well. And how do we face stress, anxiety in our, in our work life? And in a lot of times that we have gone through that, we did not get raised, we did not get promotion, so we become very depressed and dissatisfied and we could not handle it mm -hmm. on that moment. So we brought this tension and anxiety back home mm -hmm. and it gets a triple ripple effect towards the family mm -hmm. and we are not giving you know, in a proper time, we are not giving quality time to our child. So it is creating a lot of impact. Mm -hmm. So, but if we are mindful, if we understand, if we can accept all these challenges, I think this can be addressed slowly, but surely that's going to have a great longer impact. What yeah. do you think? And as you rightly say, you know, it, it is a social uh, issue which we can make a little bit of a contribution to. Um, I think parenting is important, and I think as part of our social contribution, we would like to do what we can do. Uh, to reach out to parents and help them in, um, you know, becoming better parents. Uh, then, of course, teachers 
and we would invite schools if you like us to come in and do something for your teachers and we'll do it free of charge because we really want the teachers if i can train a hundred teachers i know i might be touching uh, ten thousand students uh, in terms of the values of life and then of course the the universities and the seniors especially the role models sports people you know those who represent the country <clears throat> and if if the values are shown and we're really open to coming and doing work and obviously the policy makers if there's an opportunity to help policy makers to think through the whole aspect of emotional intelligence the values uh, which is required because these are sometimes not taught adequately in schools and we need to start creating that impact and again to do that we just can't do it with a uh, few of us so we have a team around the world uh, of sensei who is willing to help uh, we have uh, tansi samsudin who is my colleague in sri lanka supported by prarthana lenage uh, then we have uh, my colleague who is lives in australia now fazana sedik uh, fazana is from bangladesh and uh, she is uh, Uh, really a very good coach who is able to uh, really come across and uh, she can do a lot of online work then we have jeral abewadana my other colleague who lives in the uk uh, and of course not not to forget omar khan himself uh, who is in new york at the moment and all of them are really passionate about bangladesh plus the other 30 odd consultants we have you will obviously see the details in our website so in addition to that group we need to scale up so kamrul my question to you would be uh, given your network and the people who are getting attracted to you uh, what is your vision and dream about building a resource pool um, of consultants and trainers who can actually take this to the millions of people who need it uh, right that is a you know, very good question in fact you know this has become my purpose uh, of my life that and you know, what i am going to do so what i am trying to build a platform that is my that is my dream actually on that platform we would work and we want to work in, as an aggregator a lot of individuals those who have talent and those who have developed themselves and can come into and we can bring them into the specific subject matter expertise so for an example somebody is very good at you know maybe public speaking so we we can bring them onto the platform and then we can design the program for the mass mm -hmm. so that you know people who has passion and knack about it you know they can grab this expertise yeah. so for an example um, any particular skill set so that is really needed in today mm -hmm. so so that may be hundreds of kind of topics so ours could be a, would be in a platform where we want to aggregate and accommodate all these resources and build like how we can face in the future generations and that's going to be based on machine learning because that's that's the future the online based so we can design and develop you know online based learning module which is which can address every human being's life's event right. so for an example happiness yeah. on parenting and you now how we can have happy life in marriage life yeah. how we can you know raise our kid so these are some of the subject and how we can become even mindful you know how we can bring our focus so how you know maybe some other you know real skills that is required for our corporate life for an example you know how to become a good presenter how to become a good negotiator so and how we also handle all of this so in the corporate life so what i'm trying to say is we can bring we can design and we want to design all of this program into our platform and from that platform we can leverage where where, where we can serve you know very cost effective and uh, way of teach i mean uh, sharing the knowledge and yeah. wisdom it's not only us yeah. there are hundreds of people those who are expert into different arenas in different different aspect of the field of our life yeah. and subject matter expertise so we want to connect all of you that who you are thinking that you want to contribute on your skill sets towards the towards your arena towards your society and that's a platform you know we want to welcome you so whatever you are trying to do today why not you come and connect with us and together we can build a better world we can serve a better better society you know this today is a global village you know together we can go across the world and we can create larger impact today what you individual is thinking that you want to create impact on your locality but if we can collaborate together you know with all of these resources that our potentials is unlimited 
eventually we can serve the entire nation definitely and there is nothing wrong going beyond going across the globe and uh, we can bring this example that how we are addressing our education yes. and lifting the generations that's right. and that's where I think uh, your expertise of uh, 20 years come can can play a vital role you know what do you think yeah, that it's and it's not only just my expertise of 20 years the entire sense team put together mm -hmm maybe having a thousand years of experience put together. But I think what we are talking about is senseiizing the various services. For example, it could be a teacher who teaches with the sense of values and re remind people to children to be human. Uh, it could be a doctor who treats the patients in a human manner and remind about the values, the need for mindfulness, uh, need for you know, looking after themselves, doing some meditation, so that you are able to really bring, you know, connect not only a, a technical thing like medicine, but how do you get the mind into that process? And this brings us this big question where a lot of people uh, ask me sometimes, okay, but why do uh, an organization have to, uh, you know, spend on uh, this, you know, soft things like, you know, meditation and personal development, and values, how is it going to help profitability? And, I, and this is one of the biggest problems when you drive and lead with profit, you forget the humanness in us. We forget that we are part of a big human society. But I would say that before profit, focus on the people, per, per, focus on the culture. When you have happy people, motivated people, energized people coming into work, and when you have people who are skillful in resolving conflict, building rapport, helping each other, working with each other, automatically the organization starts growing. So given that situation, I think it's very important for the corporate leaders to realize that this is actually a good investment for their future. And you'll be surprised, you don't have to wait for years. Within, the, within months, you'll be getting the results when you have people really focusing their energy into high potential work. And so it's people, it's planet, and once you do those two things, then you'll have profits coming through as well. So it's very important for us to start looking at it holistically. And of course, we are very happy to uh, inform that we are having a CEO masterclass uh, coming up on the 12th of this month in a few days' time, where there's going to be lots of CEOs who will gather to discuss these topics. And I would like to invite uh, Kamrul to talk a little bit about the CEO masterclass and uh, what's going to happen over there. All right. Uh, before I talk about the CEO masterclass, that what we did also last time, the HR Leadership Masterclass, as, as I said, our intention is to create the platform where we can serve as many people as possible. So in order to serve millions of people, let's say what you have said, say we need really many resources, many skillful resources. And in order to understand the skillful resources, we need to connect them. You know, many communicate, but really few connects. On mm -hmm. that point, we are trying to you know, connect as many resourceful people possible. Yeah. So as a matter of fact, our step we have taken that, as you, as you know, that, you know, creating a, you know, our leaders, connecting our leaders into the HR community. Yeah. Now, you know, we are connecting to the CEO community and how they have transformed the organizations. Yeah. So we want to bring their expertise and experience to the real life. Right. But today, the new CEO that who are trying to be and someone who is younger in the CEO, they can understand and really can go through that process. Right. And coming up is next is CFO Masterclass. Right. So we, we want to bring a different kind of dimensions to right. the CFO community yeah. so that, you know, how we can share and grow together. And then we also going to have like CMO Masterclass, the Sales Masterclass, also not, I mean, uh, also in a supply chain masterclass, mm. and also we have a plan to bring, you know, women leadership. Right. Now, how we can instill the leadership, you know, you know, into the better way, in a bigger way, into the women of a nation, that we have thousands of professionals, women, yeah. today we see into the different corporates. So we want to bring them and to connect to them. So these are series of the programs. It is basically to connect all the expertise, to connect the communities and build the platform because if we want to build a platform, it takes time. Right. And that's the basically connecting into the, into the resource persons available into the community because right. they are the true asset of a country. So they are the people, our human resources, they are the people who can contribute significantly you know, together. That's what you know, we believe. 
So, uh, one of the one of the person, Mr. Jabedul Alam, he was asking that how can we help you know people to to come out from the comfort zone so that he can they can take risk, they can you know do something bigger and better because we sometimes fall into our comfort zone and. We don't want to put ourselves into risky situations. Mm. That is our overall human being. Yeah. So as we are going through, as you said, the mastery of self, and we have run several programs in Bangladesh, and you are doing it last 20 years as well. Yeah. So after forming our organization, Sensei Wisdom, we also have run a couple of organizations. So quickly, uh, if you can, you know, you know, answer the questions, and then we have some real examples in front of us who has mm -hmm. gone through this program we can bring them and can answer the questions of Javed Bhai as well after you. Yeah I, I think um, getting um, thank you so much for your question uh, Javed Bhai. Um, I, I think it's, it's about making up the mind if you really understand what your real potential is and really start living purposefully to build your skills around it. So whatever, let's say you're in a particular comfort zone, you know your real purpose is somewhere else. Your first step is not to immediately leave that comfort zone and go into the new one, but start living, be developing your spirituality, developing your mindset, your skills, the knowledge, your network, relationship, finances. And as you start living that uh, life and building yourself to be fit for your real purpose, a time will come where you'll be pushed internally so much that you'll be so uncomfortable being in the comfort zone. And that's where the difference happens. And obviously, attending Mastery of Self, which is we are going to have our next batch starting on the 18th of this month, um, will really show you the tools and skills on how to do that. And the, what Kamal was talking earlier about all the master classes from CEO masterclass, the CFO, the CHRO, uh, sales, marketing masterclasses. What we're hoping to do is to senseize them, which means that they start looking at their job not from only the technical aspects they learn, but with a heart, with emotional intelligence, with values, so that everyone goes back to the organization, creates a positive culture. And then they take that culture home and spread it around their families. And this little thing can start really building up to something really great. So, Kamal, you talked about some of our uh, participants being here. I would like you to invite some of them to maybe make some comments. Yeah. Yep. Thank you so much, Ranjan, for, for your insights and you know bringing all these experiences and contributing in our country for developing our organizations and resources as a whole thank you so much and oh, we it's my pleasure and it's, this is my purpose it doesn't matter where are we in the world uh, if i'm needed yep. i'll be there and and i thank you so much for your passion and really sacrificing and taking a risk and coming into this because you believe in something big and you will mm. have all the energy to do that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for your experience and everything. Yep. So answering, you know, yes, we can break our comfort zone, you know, by utilizing a particular technology called neuro-linguistic programming that can be, you know, utilized for mastering ourselves. I have with me one of the very, you know, well-known personality, well-known person, one of the person who has really able to demonstrate his, you know, presence, you know, coming out from you know, a total different kind of background. I think all of you may probably know. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to introduce you one of our participant, one of our participant of our mastery of self through neuro linguistic programming. Mr. Why don't you, you introduce yourself? Well, my dear friends, I'm Sabit Raihan before you, and probably some of you just saw my face before. And uh, first of all, I'd like to convey my gratitude and veneration to my respectable brother. Kamrul Hassan and my honorable mentor Ranjan De Silva and I'm um, thanking both of them from the deepest corner of my heart and I'm, I'm just sharing with you that why I'm thanking them from the deepest corner of my heart uh, just telling you a little story behind the scene actually my dear friends I'm from a madrasa background that Kamrul Hassan Bhai was talking about that from different background I have memorized the Holy Quran and I have gone through uh, whole madrasa background, Arabic background, 
but i don't know how i started dreaming about being a corporate trainer and stand in front of millions of people as a as an international presenter from my childhood i always had that dream uh, allah knows that how i found that dream and i never killed my dream i started working on it i started practicing learning reading books but thing is that my dear friends i just want to share with you today that what always put me in struggles that some people told me that i cannot do it and probably uh, my friends never believed me that uh, i can be a corporate trainer or i can be an international presenter though i practiced all the time i i just uh, ran towards my dream i always tried to touch my dream but thing is that those comments and the environment and uh, friends or whoever t told me that i cannot do that or i uh, actually they didn't believe in my potentials mm -hmm. that always put me down okay so you think that this program that you have gone through into the four days mastery of self how it has helped you to come out and face the challenges there's now face thing. the fear there's the thing i was telling my audience that i'm going to tell you that why i'm uh, um, i'm thanking uh, kamrul hasan bhai and my mentor ranjan de silva from the deepest corner of my heart i always had a dream i had ideas i had plans and i worked on my uh, actually i was prepared to stand in front of millions but always i was uh, i was uh, scared i i couldn't stand i couldn't tell people that i'm ready to talk to you i always was scared but b by this program what helped me my ideas has gone on to the action i i i know that only with ideas i cannot be doing anything but now i'm taking actions for example only 4 months back i participated this program and uh, after that i decided to take action there was a, a quote on the book that beginning is half done so i thought why not i start today not tomorrow i i always uh, uh, thought like that that i will start tomorrow the day after tomorrow next week next month next next year like that i have passed ages uh, from my childhood i'm 27 years old now but after that program what i did i i started taking action on my plan and and now Uh, alhamdulillah uh, next week i have a program in hotel six seasons and i stood in front of audience in uh, bangladesh bank then brag bank now signing up with uh, uh, united group and uh, very soon i'm going to go to abu dhabi i have to communicate with somebody all this stuff i'm doing after this program because thing is that uh, all the ideas all the preparations were hidden and and it's it, it has come out because i do dare to stand in front of millions now thing is that I, now i believe that only idea doesn't work i have to take action and that's what i learned from this program actually thank you thank you so much you know i hope javed bhai you have got the answer you know even though you ask the questions and you know how to come out from the comfort zone and the most obstacle is the fear to come out from the comfort zone whether do we take the risk you know what people will say and am i going to have success am i going to fail and how am i you know going to face all of these challenges the unknown things so this has you know we have the real example and now we have another example in front of us uh, but for the due to time constraint probably we may not be able to you know bring another person on this chair but what overall we can say that in our in in our country in bangladesh sense of wisdom is here is actually to contribute in significantly to develop our education how we learn how we educate ourselves and how we face our challenges that day to day we face you know what is our what is our fear and what is the purposes of life you know these two things if we can separate ourselves you know life as a whole we can we can achieve something bigger and better which may not we may not see today but you know that is the kind of experience that we are going to bring into the platform that we are talking about you know how we see the life is all about you know looking into three different aspect three different aspect that is the 
you know, what experience that we want to have in our life, experience, for an example, you know, what kind of life, what kind of house we want, what kind of car we, we want to have, what kind of life that we're expecting ourselves, and then what is our growth potentials that we think it is possible, and then and how we want to contribute our life into the society. So overall, into this, Sensei is going to bring all of this life-based education, education, content into you know in order to face the challenges that we have that is all to have our dream to to bring into the reality that is all how we can face the fear that we have that is not letting us to take steps that is our objective you know in that way probably we can contribute significantly to develop our mindset that we have today and we believe that if we can able to you know to contribute significantly on the mindset to you know open you know close to open mindset then that, that we can embrace all these challenges that we face today only then we can expand our horizon our thinking horizon you know our actions into the reality as Sabit was saying that you know actions that was delaying continuously and that was because of the fear so that is actually the, our, our objective you know to face the real life challenges. Thank you, Sabit. Thank you very much for sharing your your experiences that you have gone through, and we are delighted to have you have you on this platform. And thank you very much for having me here. And uh, audience, uh, I did love this uh, program, and this person just uh, okay. Let's see what bigger thing happens later. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I want to thank you all the audiences, all the viewers that who has watched us and who will be watching in the future in the next time would be recorded as well and all the participants those who have asked questions that hopefully some of the questions that we have you know we have answered through our conversation and I would like to request all of you to stay tuned that we are bringing series of programs series of events series of you know experience sharing series of you know as we go also in the corporate training and development we have live based event and also coming ne coming next which is a platform as I told you and my only invitation to all of you to give all of your support and thoughts and oil wish and we believe that together with all of you that we only can progress and that is a collaboration that is we are looking forward towards with all of you those who are contributing out of your life and we want to bring all of you and we want to thank you for your significant support and contribution that you have shown over the past couple of months we are really delighted from the sense of wisdom, myself and uh, our chairman Ranjan De Silva, as I said, we are extremely grateful to all of you. And with this tone, we want to say that until we see the next time, next event, we want to say you good night. Take care.